Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to do two things. The first is to set up a local Prisma project that uses a PostgreSQL database that's on your computer. Because whenever you do Prisma init, it actually doesn't really give you anything except for just like initializing the Prisma server. You then have to create your own server, so I'm going to be showing you that other part of how you create your own server that interacts with the Prisma server. And then secondly, how to run SQL, raw SQL, um, on the database that Prisma uses. Because sometimes Prisma does not have the uh, operation that you want to do, or maybe it's uh, not efficient enough or optimized in a slightly different manner that you need, so you can actually write the SQL yourself. So let's first start off with setting up our server or our project. So we know how to set up basically a Prisma server on our machine. We do Prisma init, and I can just call this temp if I want to. And then we fill out their little questionnaire. So for this, I'm gonna say uh, new database, and I'm gonna say PostgreSQL, and it goes ahead and creates a directory called temp, and then I have three files right here. Um, and this is how you can spin up the Prisma server, but you also wanna create your own uh, basically server and they used to have this bundled together in like a boilerplate that they would give you but now it's in a separate package called GraphQL CLI so you're gonna want to install uh, this thing called GraphQL CLI I've already done that and then after you do that you're gonna want to run GraphQL uh, create and then the name of your application so I'm gonna call mine my app and then you want to pick the boilerplate you want. I'm going to be using the TypeScript basic, but there's a lot of different options. Uh, they have Vue, React, and just plain old Node. Looks like they also have Angular. And I'll link this in the description if you want to pick a different um, boilerplate, you can. And I've already run this because it takes a few minutes to install and load all the stuff. But when you do, you have a directory called My App. Now, by default, my app is actually connecting to a, a public Prisma cluster, and we'll look at that in a second. But what I would recommend is actually just running everything or the Prisma server on your computer because A, it'll be easier to deploy this later, um, and especially if you need to access the database uh, yourself, uh, which we'll get into in just a second. So, what I like to do is just move um, Docker Compose file uh, inside of my app so that way it's inside of there and I can start the Prisma server from there so I already have it open in Visual Studio Code so here is what it looks like that boilerplate I was talking about and if we click into the folder called database we can see the prisma.yaml is filled out with some stuff and we can see here is our endpoint of the Prisma API or the Prisma server now we're gonna run ours locally, so we can change this to uh, localhost 4466. And then our data model has a post that's totally fine, and then we can see there's some seed data that's gonna be in our database. Um, and then we have the docker compose file. And in here it starts up both a Prisma server and also a Postgres um, database in docker which uh, this is good to do as well. I like actually just running Postgres um, in Docker as well because this makes it easier if I want to deploy this rather than using the Postgres on my computer. Now by default, if you were just gonna spin up this instance right now, I would not be able to access this Postgres database at least without uh, being able to do. There's actually a command in Docker called exec that we could run to basically enter this container and run commands on it but we can't really use that if we have any kind of like GUI like MySQL admin or whatnot that we want to access this with this we can access it so what we can do is actually open up one of the ports so I can say ports and I can specify here the port that I want to bind it to so maybe I want to run on 3001 for example um, so this is the port you want it to bind on your computer and then I, you want to specify the port that's running inside the container, which is four, uh, 5432. And that's the default one that it runs on Postgres. And also you'll notice we know 
the uh, user and the password for this is uh, Prisma and uh, the name of the database is also Prisma so when, when I start this up now I can actually access this Postgres database at port 3001 and so anything um, can now any tool can access this Postgres database uh, by specifying that port so let's see that in action so if I do docker compose up um, it'll start up it'll start the server and uh, it'll create that database so when this is done and it looks like it's ready to accept um, oh, it's creating the database and I'm going to just start up a new tab so I can do psql and I specify the host which is localhost the port which is 3001 and the user so my user is Prisma as we can see that's an environment variable and my password is also Prisma so when I run that I can type Prisma there and I am now connected um, so I was able to actually successfully connect to this database um, here now there's no data in it because we haven't deployed to it yet um, but if we wanted to we could open up a third tab and we could say Prisma deploy and it's going to take our database uh, data model the post and uh, deploy it to there now the other thing in our source index uh, typescript um, you'll notice it's also pointing to the uh, Prisma cluster so we want to change that to localhost as well so we'll close 4466 and uh, here we can see the deploy looks like service is up to date so I've run this before so it looks like it didn't even need to run uh, do any changes but you might see some things that change uh, in your database and if we come back to our psql we could select all from default and just from the post and now we can see we actually have some rows in our database hello world um, and this matches the seed.graphql here okay so this is basically the project setup so once you start um, the Prisma server with uh, docker compose up you just in another tab like I had over here you deploy any changes you make when you're doing it and then you just do yarn start and that'll go ahead and start your server so you have your Prisma server running on port 4466 and then you have your own server running on localhost 4000 so we can come over here and we can actually just query some stuff so here's me I've already done a query we can run it again uh, we get solving world hunger here for the drafts um, we could also grab the text field if we want to and we could see um, all the fields for it and whatnot and so we we have full control over uh, our server now so if we go into source index.typescript uh, I was doing the drafts and we can see what it does is it accesses the context and this this thing called DB which is the Prisma instance down here that we created and it queries the posts now I mentioned before Prisma and I uh, always be able to do all the requests you want and you might want to connect to the database and run raw SQL and now that we are able to specify uh, the database in the docker compose and we know what port it's running on 3001 we can actually connect to the database ourselves and run uh, SQL on it so I am going to just add so control get out of here I'm gonna do yarn add uh, PG and the types for it because we're using Postgres or uh, TypeScript so PG is a package and what this package does is allow you to connect to a Postgres instance and run SQL on it. Um, you could also use SQLize if you wanted to or Typeform or any of the other ones but since we're just doing queries I thought might as well keep it lightweight and just do PG. So we can import PG up here. So import and we want to get the client from PG. There we go. And here I can say const client, and I can create a new client, and I can pass in all the details for it. So the database is called Prisma, the user is Prisma, password is also Prisma, the uh, host is localhost, and the port is 3001. 
and I think I just need to have that. Yeah, it needs to be a number. So now we can connect. So I'm gonna just create a async function here. Um, const start server. And I'm gonna put this in here and I'm just gonna await client.connect. So that's us just connecting to Postgres before we start the server here. And we'll call start server. So when the server starts up, now if I wanted to, for example, I could just replace this drafts with a SQL request. So I could say const response is equal to await client.query. And here I could run that same query that I ran in PC library, got rid of it, we'll just rewrite it. Select all from default dollar sign default dot post and I could even say where is published is equal to false so this should be the same thing that we had before but uh, it's now we're running it with SQL so I'm gonna make this asynchronous and now I'm going to await the response and add, add a, a response and then return the rows there we go and we can just wrap it like that. Or sorry, I don't need to await the uh, response. I just want to return the rows like that. Okay. So now we're returning the response from the SQL statement instead of having the uh, request from Prisma. And we can restart our server and rerun it. And we can see we should get the same results now. And we come over here and we can request. Okay, so the server just hadn't restart yet. Run it again, and we can see same same ID, same title, same text. So we're able to replace it. So that is how you can actually now run any command, uh, SQL, if you need to, and just mix that up with uh, Prisma. So that's super nice, and uh, this is one of the things that was holding me back from wanting to do more stuff with Prisma, was not being able to uh, write queries like this, because stuff comes up where you're going to need to use it. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope that was helpful and gave you an idea of how to uh, get this server up and running, creating your own server versus also starting up a Prisma server, and then how to connect to that database that we created and actually run SQL on it uh, using just PG. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time.